Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. And this one, guys, I thought I would just dig deep into the vault and talk a little bit about my experiences when I was a new trader. So we're gonna talk about the six things, the six mistakes that I made when I was a newer trader or a beginner trader, because I think not only can it help newer traders now, I think it can also help experienced traders because you might still be making some of these same mistakes. Why would I say such a thing? because I still make some of these same mistakes. Obviously, I've gotten much better at them, but we're not perfect, we're human beings, so we're gonna make mistakes from time to time. The question is, what do we do after we make a mistake, and are we moving forward, right? What are you doing each and every day to make sure that you're better tomorrow? So these six mistakes that I made as a beginner are probably similar to the mistakes that many of you are making, but we're not just gonna talk about the mistakes, we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can correct those mistakes, right? It's not that hard to fix most of these. There's a couple that are more challenging than others, but some of them are pretty easy to fix. The difference is, Many of you just don't know you're doing them sometimes, all right? There's a lot of objectivity involved in becoming a great trader. You have to understand the psychology, the risk management, the money management, all of those types of things. So I hope this video will help make you guys a better trader, whether you're a beginner or an experienced trader. I think there's something in here for all of you today. If you like these videos, please click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is the six most expensive beginner trading mistakes that I made. Now, you may have made some of these or are making some of them. And I would say this probably expands beyond beginners because some of you folks have been doing this for a year or two or three, and you're probably still making some of these mistakes. I'm saying this because I know I did, right? Just because it says beginner trading mistakes doesn't mean you can't be three years into your trading career making some of these same mistakes. Um, because even to this day, there's probably a few I still make, right? We just try to manage them better in the sense of not making them as often, right? Because we're never going to be perfect traders. It's just not the way it is but we can improve, we can become better. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that today and I hope it will hit home for some of you um, that you can either address these problems or at least this lecture will make you aware that you have them, right? Because the, the first way to change something is the acceptance that you actually have the problem because we are in denial a lot as traders and this business is a unique one in that there is no one kind of hanging over your shoulder going, hey, don't do that again. You actually have to self manage yourself, which I know it sounds like, well, duh, I self-manage myself every day. It, not like this you don't, right? We have, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, societal norms, right? We have laws. I mean, you think you're free, but really we're guided by society. We're guided by laws. In trading, like, you're free to make a lot of mistakes, and we do, right? Um, so today, uh, hopefully, you can see some of the mistakes I've made, uh, and then this will help you curb some of the mistakes maybe you're currently making, okay? But before we do that, let's talk about when will the insanity stop? Um, you know, these are challenging sometimes because I understand that, you know, people are putting these when will the insanity stop comments uh, out there online, you know, to get advice from others, to, you know, to get help, et cetera, and so forth. But sometimes you just, you shake your head and scratch your head because they just don't understand what it is they're doing in any way, shape, or form. And this is a good example of that, all right? Anyone else find this downturn legitimately depressing? And I'm going to read the whole thing because, well, it's all good. <laughs> I've lost $35,000 since November, and I'm down like 25000 lifetime due to dumping a lot into stocks after I got bonuses in December. Well, I think we all can say that from December to where we are now, the market has done nothing but go down. Well, that's a shocker, you're, you're losing money? Wow, couldn't have never imagined that. I just find it depressing that I could have never saved slash invested and instead burned 35,000 on living a luxurious life for many months and I'd be in the same financial position I am in today. I, I don't know what to say to that. There was like a moment of silence there where 
I could have never saved or invested and instead burned $35,000 on a luxurious life that would be over now. You would have burnt the money and spent the money and it's gone now. But as long as you don't sell the stocks that you're in, you still have that $35,000. You still have that $25,000. So I just, for me, I'm trying to process what this person is thinking. Like, how can you call yourself, quote, an investor, and then six months later be like, oh my gosh, I'm down. I really wish that I had spent that money on BS frivolous things. Gosh, I wish I had a few more Louis Vuitton bags and Air Jordans. Huh? Right? I mean, think about that for a second. I know things should bounce back eventually. Okay, there's some common sense coming back in. But I've now lost as much money as I've made in some years a long time ago. Just makes me sad. I feel like I've sacrificed a lot to earn and save what I have. And it feels worthless right now because I am literally worse off than my friends who just spent their money on luxuries and haven't bought. No, you are not. See, and this is the problem. What do you mean you are worse off than your friends? You still have that money. It's an unrealized loss. Unrealized. See, their loss is realized, right? Those shoes, cars, bags, meals, dinners, whatever they, it is that they bought frivolously, it's gone now. It's gone. It's never coming back, okay? This is my point, Aaron. The comment somebody's making is this guy doesn't understand investing. So for somebody who is, the reason this is such a conundrum for me is someone who is smart enough to save money and invest it. That's a good thing, right? And now after they've done so and the market's down 20 to 30%, depending on which indice you're talking about, now you're crying over it? And I don't know, but this person sounds young, sounds younger. I don't know if they are, but it sounds that way. Like, are you kidding me? Exactly, Jordan. Well said. I'm going to read this comment. Sad thing is, now the next time they have money, they'll blow it all on dumb stuff. And that's when they'll miss the move up. Amen. Like, amen. I'm done. Mic drop. You just hit the nail on the head. So hopefully this person will listen to this segment and they will realize that if they put their money in decent stocks, decent companies, or the market itself, it will come back and it will double and triple and quadruple. It just depends on the timeline, right? And hopefully the next time you do have some extra cash, you will do the same thing and put it into the market. Unfortunately for this person, they put it in at the peak, which was November, December, right? At the peak. It'll come back. It always does. Always does. So I just, again, this person, do you understand what investing is? You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So that's this week's When Will the Insanity Stop? I hope this person listens to this segment and I hope they understand and realize that as long as they don't sell it and it's not a crap company, this is why you invest in total market funds, it will come back. So let's dig in, guys. How I initially approached trading, all right? I think that's probably a good way to say this. How I initially approached trading, okay? These are the things that I thought. Now, I probably could have added a few more things to this. Um, past experience and intelligence guarantees future success. Oh, baby. Oh, man. I had a chip on my shoulder when I started, right? Personal situation matters. My expectations won't determine my success. I just assumed, well, I'm going to be good at this. That's all that matters. I'm going to be good doesn't matter if I say I'm going to be good in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. I'm just going to do it. It's not going to matter, right? Simulators are real. When I started, I initially traded real money for a very short period of time. And then I went to a, shim a simulator. And I, I really believed that what I was feeling, my emotions were real, okay? It's not all about money and risk management. I just assumed that I could risk what I wanted to risk. It just didn't matter. I mean, I told you guys before, the very first trade I took was 1,000 shares of eBay, and it ended up being like a 40-cent stop loss. It was a $400 risk. The very first, quote, day trade that I ever took. I look back now and go, wow, that was really, really dumb, right? Mastering emotion psychology is not required to succeed. So now the next slide is the reality, okay? So the first slide was what I thought. This slide is the reality of the situation. Past experience and intelligence does not guarantee future success. Meaning, I don't really care what your background is, right? It doesn't matter. 
I'm not suggesting that you may have done something in your past that helps you be a better trader. That's possible. But for the vast majority of people, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter if you owned a flower shop. It doesn't matter if you're a real estate broker. It doesn't matter if you're a construction worker. It doesn't matter if you've never, ever, ever even heard of the word stock market before. It really just doesn't matter, right? So the problem and the reason I'm commenting on this is I think many of us, me included, thought that what I previously did or the school I went to or the IQ level, I thought it mattered. I thought it gave me an edge. And I'm not suggesting that there might not be some little tiny edge, but largely it doesn't matter. I can't say it completely doesn't matter, but it largely doesn't matter what you've done in the past. In fact, in certain ways, it could hurt you. Being a, a buy-side institutional trader on Wall Street absolutely hurt me. 100% chance, 100% it hurt me. I came in with a monster chip on my shoulder. I thought, quote, I knew how the market works because I worked with the smart money and everyone else was the dumb money. I, I really believe that. I believe that everyone at home on a computer was dumb money. And everyone that was on MSNBC and worked on Wall Street, that was the smart money. Then I'm not saying Wall Street people are dumb. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just simply saying that because I felt that way, I approached the market differently. And that ego-based approach really hurt me. All right. And some of us are more susceptible to this than other people. OK, I also thought oh, my personal situation matter. It doesn't. Your personal situation doesn't matter. Now, some of you are going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me, Jared, somebody that has a million dollars versus somebody that has five hundred dollars doesn't. No, it does matter, but it doesn't matter. You're like, Jared, stop, stop, stop. What I am saying is successful trading does not have to do with anything with the size of your trading account. I showed that to you guys when I turned $2,165 into $100,000. It's not the size of your account that matters here. It's how you trade that matters. Now, I am not denying that having more money gets you a higher level of education that you can afford to pay for. It also allows you to make more mistakes without severely damaging your account. I get that. But it has no bearing on good trading versus bad trading. Make sense? Like your personal situation has nothing to do with whether you are a proper trader or a poor trader, okay? It may give you a few more, you know, in, with cat, you say, oh, the cat has nine lives. It may give you a few more lives, a few more chances to, to make the right or the wrong right, if that makes sense, right? You Maybe you blew up an account, you have extra money, gives you a second chance. You may not have that chance when you don't have a big account. I get that. My expectations will determine my success. Guys, most people fail before they ever start in this business. They have failed because the timeline they have chosen is way too short. We'll get to that in a minute. Simulators are not real, okay? And this this line is a source of contention across the industry. And it's like a 50-50 thing. There are There's half the people out there that believe that you should stay in a simulator until you understand proper trading and are even pr profitable in a simulator. And you shouldn't go to real money until you get that figured out. I actually believed that for my first few years in trading. For the last 15, I haven't believed that. Because you need to feel things. Because 90% of trading is how you feel about trading, right? how your psychology works. And if your psychology isn't tested because the money's not real, well, you're not actually getting better, right? So again, I think half the industry will disagree with me on this and half the other half will agree with me. But simulators aren't real. We'll talk about it in a minute, okay? It's all about money and risk management, okay? I didn't think this mattered that much. Like, I really didn't. Obviously, I wouldn't have started with $400 risk on my very first trade if I actually understood proper risk management. Right? I, no one would do that. That's crazy. That's silly. That's stupid. It doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars to unnecessarily lose money is stupid. Dumb. Right? And then mastering emotions is required to succeed. Why didn't I think this was important? It wasn't that I didn't think that emotions and psychology were important. You know what the problem was? I just didn't think about it at all. I just didn't think about it at all. I didn't come into this business thinking, well, geez, Jared, if you could just master those emotions you have, you'll be a good trader. I didn't even recognize. It was like, 
unconscious incompetence. I didn't even recognize it was needed to be a good trader. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I just took the kids to Disneyland and I waited three hours for, for Space Mountain. I'm a patient person. So you come into trading thinking, well, that's who's going to be trading. That patient person waiting in line at Disney. No, that's not. You, and you don't even know it until you go through it, right? So this last one, number six, I didn't even know it existed. Wow, what, what do you mean psychology? Like, seriously, when you go into a, when you get a job, and I don't care what it is, it could be an office job, uh, you could be a real estate agent, you could be, uh, I don't know, a car salesman. You're not thinking about, well, my psychology is really important today. No, you just wake up and you're like, all right, got a client to meet. I'm going to go meet that client. I'm going to go try to sell him a house. I'm going to go try to cook this hamburger because I'm a chef. You don't wake up thinking that your emotions matter. You know kind of there's, a, there's an aspect of whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood, but it's not something that's forefront, like seriously important to you. In trading, it's everything. So imagine that. I came in not even thinking about emotions or psychology, and it ends up being the single most important thing you'll deal with in trading. Pretty crazy, right? So, past experience means very little. Ever been a trader before? Well, no. If you've never been a trader before, you've never been a trader before. Why do I put that in there? Because you have no idea what the expectation is because you've never done it before. Right? So you've read a couple articles on Google or watched a YouTube video, but you don't really know what, what the expectation is, what's required of you. Ever had a job where you can make money, not make money, and lose money? See, guys, let me explain something to you. I had somebody tell me that they were a salesman and they experienced losing money. I said, no, you didn't. I said, they don't claw back your money. Right, so if you have a, a car deal that, that kicks, right, or comes back, you didn't have the money in the first place. You weren't paid out on that, right? If you're a timeshare salesman and you're selling something, there's a waiting period. You could have a deal kick later, but they didn't pay you out on it. Real estate's the same. You could have a deal and it doesn't close, but you never, you never had the money in your bank. Make sense? So there's a difference. You're not actually losing money you're just not making the money you thought you were entitled to or you thought you earned. In trading, you could literally start with $100,000 and by the end of the day, be down to $90,000. You actually lost your money. Most people never, there are exceptions to this, most people never, ever deal with this, right? Make money, cool. Not make money, okay, it's not fun, but losing money. Some business owners deal with this, but the average person who clocks in nine to five doesn't deal with losing money. Ever had to truly self-manage yourself? The answer to this question for most people is yes, absolutely, all the time, every day. No, you don't. No, you don't. See, everything else we do in the world has parameters attached to it, guidelines attached to it. You want to keep your job, you do this, you'll get fired. Yeah, you don't want to go to jail, you don't speed on the highway, right? There are, I'm not saying that there aren't some jobs that you have to self-manage yourself, but most everything we do is somewhere in a book confined in, in between two lines, right? Those lines are like right and wrong, okay? Good and bad. Well, it's not that we don't have those things in trading. We do, right? You have rules. You have a rule book. You have all those things, a trading plan, a roadmap. We have all those same things. But what you don't have in trading compared to the outside world is someone who's going to hold you accountable to it, right? Go step out on your spouse. Well, there's, there's going to be consequences for that. Don't show up for five days in a row at work and don't call your boss and tell him you're not coming in. Well, she might be pretty pissed off at you. She might say, you're done. You didn't call. You're out. There's the consequence. Go too fast on the highway. Maybe get your car impounded. There's always something that makes sure you stay within those, those confines, those, those boundaries. There's nothing to do that. That's why I say, have you ever truly had to self-manage yourself? No. The answer is no. Most people have not, okay? On a small scale here or there, but generally no. When I sit in front of my desk right now, I could take a trade right now that none of you know about. You'll never know. My volume's off. You can't hear order filled. I could go lose a million dollars and you wouldn't know it. 
who's going who's gonna to come to me and knock on my door and say, Jared, you sought a million bucks. You're cut off. You can't trade anymore. No one. The answer is no one. There's not a single person who's going to walk in my office and stop me from losing another million dollars. Self-management. It's a new thing for most people in, at this, in, in this level, okay? Ever dealt with your inner demons? What? I don't have inner demons. What do you mean deal with inner demons? I don't have them. I'm a happy-go-lucky person. I show up to the office. I fill out my ex spreadsheet. I get my paycheck on Thursday and Friday, and I go home. What do you mean inner demons? What I don't even understand. Does my wife piss me off once in a while? Yeah, that's great. That's not an inner demon. You don't even know you have them. They don't even manifest themselves normally in real life. Does that make sense? In trading, they pop out all over the place. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was capable of that. Good and bad. I had no idea I was capable of that. I came in thinking, well, I buy here and I sell here. And if it doesn't work, I get out here. Why did I keep it past the stop loss? I don't know, but I just did. And worse than, worse than saying I didn't take my stop losses, why am I still in it? And you sit there and you scratch your head and you're like, I know I should get out. 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 Why am I not getting out? Why am I not getting out? Why am I not? Oh, oh, that's right. Because the need to be right is strong with me. Oh, there's that demon, the need to be right. Shit. Because I know I should be getting out because it's now down 3R, but, 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 if I don't sell it, it'll come back up. Maybe I'll break even on it. That inner demon, that angel and devil on your shoulder going back and forth is something you've generally never dealt with. Sure, we all have inner demons occasionally that we deal with in life, but it's every day, all day long in trading right? Ever not have consequences for your actions? The answer is no. I can't think of a situation in life where you don't have a consequence for doing something. It's pretty much all the time. Some of them are soft consequences and some of them are pretty hard and tough, right? And severe. In trading, everything you do has a consequence whether it's dwindling down your trading account so that you can't trade anymore, right? Whether it's being depressed because you can't follow your trading plan or whether it's the pressure of not making money because you got to pay the bills and you're breaking your plan, right? There's consequences. In real life, we have consequences. In trading though, the problem is no one's going to stop you from doing the same wrong thing again and again and again and again, right? Ever think you knew it all, but you were wrong? Well, this one was easy for me. I'm married, so, you know, <laughs> I think I know it all every day and my wife tells me otherwise. So for the men out there, we get this one. The problem is we don't learn from it. We, it's the truth. I mean, we all have egos. We do, okay? Every human being. Some people's ego is more severe and significant than others, but we come into trading and we seriously, we think we know it all because we read a Google arc article about trading and I watched a YouTube video for 35 minutes and that guy sounded like a nice guy or that girl sounded like she knew what she was talking about. And all of a sudden it's like, well, now I know how to trade. Do you really? Just because you watched a couple videos and you read a few articles, now you're an expert on the topic. Well, no, you know that that's ridiculous. But you're trying to lie to yourself. This is, goes back to the consequences, the inner demons, the self-management. All this ties together, right? Because it ties in with the last one. Because we think we're special. Tell me. You don't have to tell me. It's rhetorical. Tell me you don't think you're special. You do. You think that because so-and-so took two years to get this, that's ridiculous. And you're different. It's going to take you six months. And you're like, well, why? Why do you feel that way? Well, because now I see what that person did wrong. So I'm not going to make that mistake. Oh my gosh. You know what that's like? It's like vowing that you'll never be like your parents. And then you wake up one day and you're like, holy shit. I'm very similar to my parents. And it's hard, isn't it? It's hard that, that revel revelation, realization, whatever you want to call it. You realize that you, re you have to work at these things. They don't just, you don't snap your fingers, wave the magic wand, and you're a different person. You have to work at these things, okay? 
So you think the rules don't apply to you because you're different, or you think, well, Jared said don't do that, so I won't. And then you find yourself in the situation doing exactly what I said not to do. And you're like, well, wh why is this happening? But it takes you making the same mistake 10 times over to realize maybe I'm not so different than everyone else. And the aha moments for me are when I teach something and people will comment and they'll say, God, how did you know that? This is my favorite. I feel like you're inside my head right now, like you're talking directly to me. Well, gee, I, I, I don't know why. It's only because I went through it and I felt the exact same way you did. I'm no different than you and the person sitting next to you or across the room or down the hall or in another country is no different than you. Our, our emotions are largely similar. Very, very similar. But we think they're not. You think that what took someone else five years to overcome, you'll overcome it in five months just because you read their book. Well, I read all the mistakes that person made. I'm definitely not going to make those mistakes till you make them. And then the problem with making them is sometimes we're in denial and it takes us making the mistake many, many times over before we recognize. They're not the same thing, right? Four wheels and a steering wheel, that's about where the comparison ends. A Formula One driver could tell you all about how to drive a Formula One car. But you're not going to get within 10 seconds of his lap time or her lap time. It's not going to happen unless you already have professional race car experience. So you have a little Corolla. That's great. It's got four wheels and a tire and a steering wheel. Four tires and a steering wheel. Great. Oh my gosh, they both have a gas pedal and a brake. Oh my gosh, it's the same thing. It's like that article I, I read on Google. It's not. You know, you've bought some Tesla stock or crypto before, so now you're ready to be a trader. Think again. It's not the same thing. So when somebody tells you, hey, I'm only saying this to help you because I've been through it. I had the Corolla and now I, I drive the Formula One car. I am telling you because I've seen both. They are different. Okay. The best analogy I can give you, and I don't want to rub people the wrong way by giving the analogy is I send my kids to a private school. My sister-in-law and my brother sent their kids to a public school. Well, I've been to both. I've been to public and private. They are different. They are not the same thing. And she was trying to tell me they're the same till they sent their kids to a private school. And she said, I want to apologize to you. You're right. They're not the same thing. She thought people just waste 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a year to send their kids to school just for the name. Oh, it's such and such. No, it's because of the values they teach, what they learn. And of course, the people they're around. My point is, is somebody's been on both sides of this. Listen to them. But if they've only been on one side of this, it's hard to take advice from that person. Right? If you've only ever driven the Corolla, you have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to a Formula One car. It's like bench bench racing, right? Magazine bench, you know, benchmarking. Anyone who's been to a racetrack in a car, but the magazine says it'll do this. So what? Those conditions are different than what we have here today. My point is this. Listen to people with more experience than you. There's a reason they're telling you what they're telling you. They're trying to help you not go through the same thing. Now, there will be a portion of this that you have to experience, but you will do yourself well by listening as much as you can. For example, for example, can you honestly look me in the eye and genuinely, truly tell me that you know what it's like to take 5,000 shares of a climactic buy setup? stock that probably has a dollar spread, just dropped from 16 to 10, and you're like, yep, I'm going to take 5,000 shares of this bad boy. No big thing. Oh my gosh. You'd be, you'd be running for a safe space if you took this thing. You don't have no idea what trading a climactic or a parabolic is like until you've traded it. They're wild. They're whippy. They're crazy. They're all over the place. So don't tell me you know what it's like until you've done it. And that also means don't do it with huge risk and huge share size. Don't do it. That's why I'm telling you, $5 risk, 10 shares, 5 shares, 25 shares. Something that is, you don't just go, like the, keep using the car analogy, you just don't go 200 miles an hour in an F1 car. You're going to do 50 miles an hour first, and then 75, and then 100, right? 
Trading's the same way. You're not just going to walk into this style of trading or this type of trade and know exactly what you're doing. You have to feel what it's like to be up a dollar and then blink your eye and it's down a dollar because that's what climactics can be like. No one can teach you that. They can teach you what to expect, what to look for, and what to watch out for. But they can't teach you the emotion of it actually happening to you. You can watch somebody getting punched in the face, but until you've been punched in the face, you have no idea what it feels like. You know that saying, I've had my hound kicked around? Well, there's a part of that in trading. So what, where am I going with all this? I've spent so much time on these last three slides. I'm trying to tell you, when I say risk $5, when I say stay away from $500 stocks because they're whippy, I'm saying it to you because you're not ready yet. Small shares, small risk, lower price stocks that are less wild and whippy. Do that first. Show me you can drive the Corolla first before I let you drive the F1 car. Okay? Think about it. Now, you're going to work hard for this. You're going to work really hard for this. Okay? Experts are made, man. They're not born. I'm not denying that some people are born with innate abilities. Right? LeBron James is 6'8 and jacked. He's got physical attributes that a lot of human beings don't have, okay? That's something that's special, right? But when it comes to trading and it comes to many things in life, you may not be able to be the best in the world, but you'll be able to be great at it. I, I, I'm a firm believer in that, okay? Spud Webb's 5'5 five, five and made it to the NBA. That's unusual. Where I'm going with this is, you didn't need to go to Harvard to be a successful trader. You don't need to have an IQ of 150 to be a good trader, but you need to have hard work. You need to recognize the challenge. You need to recognize the hard work that's required, right? Expertise success is a product of purposeful training, not talent or giftedness. Now, again, I'm not talking about the greatest of all time. They are the rare exception where everything comes together where the giftedness, the talent, and the training comes together. When you talk about a Wilt Chamberlain, a LeBron James, a Michael Jordan, a Roger Federer, a Novak Djokovic, whatever, whoever you want to talk, Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna, everything comes together for those people. But there's a lot of people that make a living in those industries that aren't the greatest of all time. Meaning you can make a great living in trading without being the greatest trader of all time. Does that make sense? But you're going to work. You're going to have to put the time and the effort into it. All right? Most experts practice only two hours a day, but it's an intense two hours with clear purpose and direction. Okay? The making of an expert, you should, you should read it. Okay? There's two versions. There's the long version and there's kind of the short version. But if we analyze the development of superb performers, we see that in almost every case, almost every case, the success of their entire career was dependent on the quality of their practicing, which was the product of supervision by their teacher. Now, Almost every person you know that's great at something had somebody help them, right? Look at Venus and Serena Williams. Great example. Their dad was determined to make sure that they were going to be great tennis players. So he knew he could only take them so far. And he took them extremely far. And then he went for outside help. He said, look, I think I've gotten them where I can get them. Now I'm going to need some extra help. Traders do the same thing. But a lot of times, unfortunately, traders don't have a dad like Richard Williams, right? They sit there, well, I'll do it all myself. And the problem with that is sometimes you learn bad habits early on and those bad habits come back to bite you and they're much tougher to fix when they become a habit, right? So it's only human nature, guys, to want to practice what you can already do well since it's a heck of a lot less work and a heck of a lot more fun. Sam Snead, for those of you that don't know that, he's a golfer. Um, so the point though is... Isn't it easy in trading to just scan for charts? When perhaps you're actually pretty good at scanning for charts, the problem with you is management. The problem with you might be not taking a stop loss. So I'm not saying don't scan for charts. I'm saying take more of the focus that was on scanning charts and put it in a more purposeful training aspect where you're working on your emotional demons, your psychological demons. You're working on ways to make sure you take a stop loss. It's like... I've used this analogy before. 
It's like going to the driving range and hitting drivers all damn day when your chipping and putting is terrible. Well, go practice your chip. Well, it's not as fun. Well, do you want to get better or not? You want to get better or not, right? Personal situations are irrelevant. Okay, I should say largely irrelevant. There are exceptions to everything. Market doesn't care about you. Market doesn't care that your mortgage is due. The market doesn't care that your car needs repairs. The market doesn't care that your savings account is almost empty. The market doesn't care that your severance package ends next month. The market doesn't care that you have three years trading experience and you're not making money yet. The market just doesn't care. And there's no way it could because it doesn't know. How could someone or something that doesn't even know about you care about you? They kind of have to know your situation to actually care. So in a way, this is very, very good, right? Not caring about you is actually the best thing the market can do. It's the most loving thing the market can do. But this is the problem. You see, I thought it did. See, I thought it mattered. I genuinely thought it mattered that, hey, I only have six months left of savings in my savings account. So this has to work in the next six months. You know what the answer to that question is? It doesn't. You're ready when you're ready. You can't just say, well, my severage package ends next month. So I have to start making money by the end of next month. You can't do that. It doesn't work like that. It might take you five years to make money in this business. And in a rare, 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 rare case, it might take you five months to make money. But it will happen when it happens. Now, you can bust your butt and be the best you can be. But you're not the same as the person next to you or across from you. One person may get it in a year, another person may get it in three years, and they both work just as hard. It just didn't happen for you in that time period. The market doesn't care about us, guys. And you should love that about it, right? Me pretending I understand what's happening with the market. I was told I'd be a millionaire here, right? Don't be too smart for your own good. No, you don't understand, Jared. I'm different. I'm special. No, you're not. You're not. See, you could work 12 hours a day or 15 hours a day, and it doesn't mean you're going to get it any quicker. You may get it quicker, possibly, but it doesn't guarantee success in, say, 12 months. Just because you put 12 hours a day and doesn't mean 12 months later you're guaranteed success. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. Which means you need to be flexible with your timeline. If you're not flexible with your timeline, you're probably going to end up as a failed trader, right? Because your expectations definitely matter. If your timeline's too short, you will fail. This business will take you two to three times longer than you expect to succeed, right? And no, no, no. You are not different. You don't, you're not. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're special. You know, you just had your IQ tested and it's 167. We're happy for you, right? You used to be the CEO of ExxonMobil. We're happy for you. You graduated summa cum laude from MIT. We're happy for you. It means nothing here. Nothing, right? Nothing. What you, the baggage you bring with you doesn't mean anything. Again, there are exceptions here or there, but as a general rule, it doesn't mean anything. And you should like that. It means we're kind of all starting on the same playing field, the same level, right? We all have the same trading platforms, same trading computers. It doesn't matter if you have a $4,000 computer or a thousand dollar computer. If your internet sucks, your internet sucks. It doesn't matter how good your computer is. You get what I'm saying? Like across the board, I'm looking at the same charts you're looking at on the same platform. You're likely looking at them. The people that have an advantage over us are HFTs and huge multi-billion dollar JP Morgans and Goldman Sachs, but, but that's not who you and I are thinking about. Meaning when you start and I start, we're not worried about Goldman Sachs. We're worried about each other. And so when that person starts next to me, when Randy starts, when KL starts, when Sophia starts, we're starting on the same plane. I get some people have more money than other people, but the market will treat you the same is what I'm saying. If you're missing my point, that's what I meant to say. The market will treat us all the same. If we take the same stock at the same price, we are subjected to the market. All of us are, right? So... You have to understand that, no, you're not special. And this is going to take a long time, all right? This business is going to take a while to succeed at. I know you think you're different. 
I know you're going to come in. Yeah, but Jared, but, 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 but I, I work twice as hard as the guy next to me. Well, maybe you need to work twice as hard to get to the same place that person does. I know I have family members that really struggled in school. For me, school wasn't as tough. There's a math problem. Boom, done. They're still working on it. See what I'm saying? They may have to work an extra hour to get to the same place it took me to get to in five minutes. Well, trading's the same way. Just because you work 15 hours a day, someone else might only have to work five hours a day. Who knows? So don't go in with that attitude. Just work hard and make constant progress. If you do that, you'll eventually get to the place you want to be. Maybe, le maybe sooner than you expected, maybe longer. This one, guys, and I alluded to this earlier, but... I don't understand why people don't get that simulators aren't real, right? I had somebody, true story, this is, shoot, a couple months ago, tell me they have this incredible algorithm that they've, tra that they've created, okay? And it takes somewhere around 100 trades a day, and it, make, it made some obscene amount of money. Like, it made hundreds of, like, 100 grand a day type thing. It was absurd, okay? And it was all based off a simulator because the person didn't have any money. And I was like, so you want me to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars on something that's never been tested with real money? No, I, I think I'll wait because simulators aren't real, right? See, for those of you that are unaware, and many of you are aware, but for those of you who are not aware, simulators don't act the same way real platforms do, okay? So if you want 1,000 shares of a stock, but the stock only printed 100 shares at your price point. The simulator will still fill you for 1,000 shares. I've had this happen to me many times. So let's just say you're trying to buy, I don't know, Micron Technologies, MU, and you have 1,000 shares at $59. And let's say only 100 shares print there. You'll get a full fill in your platform. Okay, You'll get a full fill. You're like, well, wait a sec, but it only printed 100 shares. How did it fill me full? Exactly, I don't know. You'll get less slippage in a simulator. The emotions are not real. Stocks that are hard to borrow are magically shortable in simulators. There's no such thing as hard to borrow in a simulator. Okay. Now, maybe they're getting better. Maybe they're getting more realistic. That's a good thing. But the one thing, no matter how realistic they get, that they can never, ever, ever, ever compensate for is the emotions in which you feel, how you feel in the middle of a trade. And we all know emotions are 90% of this business. The decision to not take a stop loss is an emotion, right? It's that fear of loss. Hope for gain. So the emotions are completely different, okay? Losing real money is different than losing fake money, okay? You need to feel it. So I disagree with a lot of people out there who say, well, you should stay in your simulator until you have a well-defined trading plan and you understand what your approach to the market is and you have a great money management approach and you have a great trade management approach and your psychology is perfect. Well, geez, then you'll never get out of the simulator. The simulator is good for one thing and one thing only, right? One thing and one thing only learning the buttons on your platform, learning how to set up a chart, learning what a stop market order is, what a stop limit order is, what a limit order is, how to set a bracket order. That is what a simulator is for, learning how to use a platform. That's it. Guys, trust me. Uh, for those of you that fly, I fly a little bit, okay? There's a reason that the simulator is harder than a real plane or a real jet. Because the consequences in reality are much greater. But I can tell you this. If you've ever been in a simulator, a jet, a flight simulator, <laughs> smacking that thing down on a tarmac, not landing properly, loss of oxygen at 40,000 feet, it's not the same thing in a simulator. Right? You can practice all day long in a simulator. And don't get me wrong. It will help you prepare. I'm not denying this. There is a purpose for it. But it's not the same as, you know what, puckering up when there's a real loss of oxygen at 40,000 feet, when there's a real fire on board. And for those of you that fly, and if that's ever happened to you, you pucker up quick. Oh, shit, is the first two words that you're thinking. Oh, shit. In a simulator, it doesn't happen, not to that degree. So the emotions 
are everything. Can you handle the duress, the stress of real time losing money? Because guess what you need to do? You need to still take your stop loss. You're pissed off. You're upset. You see red, 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 red. Take your stop loss. Walk away. In a simulator, like, well, okay, I'll figure that one out next time. It stopped out, but, you know, it's not really real. It's different. It's totally different. Okay? So the purpose of a simulator is to learn the buttons of your platform, right? How to place orders, how to put moving averages on your chart, how to create a chart, all those things. And when you have that down, about one month, two months max, about one to two months, move away from a simulator, risk small amounts of money. Speaking of risking small amounts of money, everything we do has to do with risk management, okay? You will not be a trader very long if you don't get this early on, all right? There's no holy grail, it just does not exist, period. Why? Because we're all different. We like different things. You ever see a car on the road that's the most hideous thing you've ever seen? Why'd you see it on the road? Because someone bought it because they didn't think it was as hideous as you thought it was. True story, right? When you look at some of these cars on the road, you're like, oh my gosh, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. That's the, re oh my goodness, that color is disgusting. Well, how come you're seeing it? Because someone disagrees with you and thinks it's the coolest color they've ever seen. Well, that's also what makes the market go around. What makes the market go around is our differing opinions towards the market. And this also goes to money management, trade management, time management, personality, and behavioral management right? Risk management and behavioral management are everything in this business. There's one more than one way to successfully manage trades. When I was new, pivots were the way to manage a trade. Well, because pivots were what? They were goal reaching, large target reaching mechanisms. But I was not a large target reason reaching personality. Let me repeat that because it's important. All right. When I started, pivots were like a, a large target mechanism. That's how you're going to get huge target. But my personality was a small target personality. Why would I ever do pivots? The answer is I don't know, but I did. And I was immensely frustrated by it. Almost cost me my trading career, not because pivots are bad, but because I couldn't do it. So know thyself. Focus on what works for you. Don't let others push you into a singular mold. Be flexible and think outside the box. Take advice. I'm not saying don't listen. Take advice. But until you understand yourself, you're going to have a hard time in this business, which we're going to talk about here in the next couple of slides. But this slide is mainly about money. Money management is everything. Risk small amounts of money. Don't do what I did on my first trade. Don't risk $400 on your very first trade you ever took. Risk $5. Because if you're wrong, so what? You lost five bucks and you learned a lot. That was a well-spent $5. How many lessons can you learn if you spend $5 a lesson versus $400 a lesson? Right? You get 80 lessons out of that $400. 80 lessons. But if you spend $400, you get a lot fewer lessons learned. And you're going to need to learn those lessons, trust me. Some of which you're going to have to learn 50 times 100. You think I'm kidding. Some lessons you will make 50, 100 times over, and you'll still do the same thing sometimes. You will. So understand your expectation before you decide on a style, which means understand yourself, okay? Here's a good example. To what I said. It's all about pivots, right? I, hey, I was told, pivot, 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 pivot. That's how it's supposed to manage. Hey, get in down here on the buy setup, raise your stop on the breakout here, raise it on this pivot, raise it on it. Well, that's wonderful. I am not telling you it's a bad management. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm telling you, hey, it's a good management. But it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm not a patient trader. The longer I'm in a trade, the more mistakes I make. I always sell too soon. Am I doomed for trading failure? No. Find a management strategy that's conducive to your personality style. And you will find a path to success. But if you keep lying to yourself, you'll probably fail. And you may ultimately get to the point where you can actually trade with pivots. You may get to that point, but you're not going to start at that point. Some people might. Some people are patient. I'm not saying this is true for everyone. We all have our own demons, right? We talked about that earlier. This is just one example of demons I had 
You won't know your strengths. You won't know your weaknesses until you actually do it. Remember I talked about the climactic chart earlier? How are you going to know? How are you going to know how it feels until you felt it? Right? You can talk about, and again, I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but I think it's probably something we can all relate to. Some one of your friends breaks up with their longtime girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and they're really upset. But you're happy because you're in a good relationship and you guys are getting along. And they are devastated, right? Devastated. And you're like, yeah, I feel, I feel bad for you. I really genuinely feel bad for you. And then what happens? You and your significant other break up. And now you are actually feeling the emotions that your friend felt. It's a lot different than telling, right? Sympathy and empathy are two different things. Sympathy is nice, but empathy is real, right? So you won't know what it's like to manage on pivots until you try it. You won't know what it's like to take a climactic bicep until you've tried it. So you can say, well, this is what I'm supposed to do, but you won't know if you'll actually do what you're supposed to do until you're in the middle of the battlefield, right? Another example, right? So here's an example on the flip side. Exactly. It's a great quote, isn't it, Davy Dave? <laughs> I love that quote. Recession is when your neighbor loses their job. Depression is when you lose your job. It's a great quote. Anyway, here's another example. Shoots up, pulls back, nice little bicep at 49.50. But do you quickly recognize this pattern? The answer is probably yes for many of you. If so, then chances are you've probably mastered it. So it's not the pattern we're after. You may have mastered it. If you, ha- if you don't recognize this quickly, then you haven't mastered it. And that's okay. That's okay. So the point, though, of the slide is perhaps your focus is better spent on areas you are less familiar with. So we got the entry down. We got the stop loss down. But where I need help is management. When it breaks out here, do I raise my stop there? When it pulls back here, do I raise my stop here? When it pulls up here, do I raise? You see what I'm saying? Like You may look at it and go, well, I get the pattern. I'm good with that. I can enter it. I can place a stop loss. But man, that management is something else. Well, if you're not trying to be better, what are you trying to do? You're going backwards. So you need to be thinking to yourself, last time I took a trade like this, where where was the struggle? And this is where tracking spreadsheets come in, journaling comes in, et cetera, and so forth. But the point, though, is focus on what you need work on. The pattern comes easy to you. Focus on the management. Okay. And we talk, we, we've crossed over a little bit, but understanding oneself is, is an extremely important part of trading. It, you could argue it is the only thing that matters in trading. I know we talk a lot about money management, risk management, but if you don't understand yourself, everything else won't matter because you'll be lying to yourself, right? You'll have the results in front of you, but you'll be lying to yourself about those results. Oh, well, that only happened because I didn't get a good night's sleep. Well, that's the last time I'm ever going to sell too soon. It means you're not understanding yourself. And if that's the case, you're basically in denial about who is really doing this. You are doing it to yourself. But you're in denial about your ability to change or fix it. Because until you accept it, you can't fix it. It's powerful. Until you accept it, you can't fix it. And acceptance is hard, right? It's like being in the middle of a conversation. And then it turns into an argument. And then someone flat out, in your face, undeniable proves that what you were thinking is wrong. You've been shown to be wrong. When's the last time you just said, yeah, my bad? You're still looking at it going, shit, 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 shit. I know they're right. I know they're right. Is there anything I can say to this right now that would even give me like a little bit of redemption here, anything at all that makes me not sound as stupid as I was. No, until you can accept that the answer to that question is no, you'll never move on. So in order or to help you, I should say, to help you do that, we need to simplify our approach because simplifying it means there's less moving parts, fewer things for us to misconstrue or argue over. And then to to keep it simple, you're going to have to have a level of objectivity and self-responsibility. But the simpler you make it, the easier it is to have objectivity because you're like, well, there's only two moving parts here, not 27. It only, can only be one of these two reasons why I'm not making money. 
a lot becomes a lot easier to fix the problem, right? So the market is not out to get you. No one's fishing for your shares. Having mindfulness, right? The ability to evaluate oneself in real time. You're in the middle of the trade and you're saying to yourself, my goodness, I really want to get out of this thing. But if I do, I'm breaking my plan. That's mindfulness. But then the question becomes, what do you do about it? Do you go, gosh, I'm in danger of doing something really stupid right now. So I'm going to walk away. Now that, that's professionalism, right? Mindfulness is accepting, acknowledging how you feel right now. But the professionalism comes when you make the proper decision and deal with your mindfulness. Does that make sense? The professionalism comes when you say, I'm about to sell this damn thing. I need to walk away. And if I don't, I will sell it. Walk away. That's good. That's a positive response to being mindful about what is going on. Easier said than done. Many people will be mindful about things. They fully understand and respect and appreciate how they feel, but they don't know how to change it. They don't know how to act on it, right? Perfect patterns rarely fail. Why settle for less? It's just a good mantra, guys. PPRF, perfect patterns rarely fail. Yeah, they fail sometimes but a lot less than bad patterns. Why settle for less? You know who's good at that? Cass is good at that. Jordan's really good at that in here. I've seen Shane's pretty good at that. There's a lot of you that are good at that. They're like, I know when they come up with an idea, you know what, that's a really good idea. Which means I can tell they're not settling for crap. They're waiting for really good stuff. So you should too, because it's the way to make more money. So due to your past and present actions, you are where you are supposed to be. If you are unhappy with that, then it is up to you to change it. Okay? This one may be the most powerful two sentences in this entire lecture today. Due to your past and present actions, you are where you are supposed to be. If you are unhappy with it, it's up to you to change it. No one else can change you. You have, you have to want that change. You have to make that change. I am not saying it won't be, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And I'm not even commenting about your past. We all have different starting points in life. Some people have a much tougher path in life than other people. But when you wake up one day and say, this is my life, I'm going to change it. The second you say that, the excuses are gone. And you know what's beautiful about that? It allows you to make change because you've put the excuses in the closet. And until we accept that, it's really hard to go forward. I'm serious. It's really hard to go forward. If you keep living in your past and blaming your past for where you are, like, well, my parents were deadbeats or I don't have any money. Okay, those things are true. There's nothing wrong with you saying that. But you can't live like that forever because there's no progress in that. See what I'm saying? So some people have a shitty lot in life. Some people have a wonderful lot in life and everyone in between. But it's not until you wake up one day and go, it's my life. I affect the future. Only then can you make the proper change necessary to get to where you want to be. Okay? So it's not rocket science. You can do it. But I say most won't because it's, it's hard, guys. It's really hard. And I am talking about life in general, but this business specifically, right? Yeah, you run and you run, right? Point is, is you can do it, but will you? I'm telling you, you can do it. You guys are just about everyone. I don't know everyone in here, but the ones that you're, I know you're capable. I know you have it in you, but will you, right? It's like that line in professional wealth building strategies, I know what I have given, but I do not know what you have received, right? So, a couple more slides. How will you know your strengths until you've been through this, right? Hindsight makes many trades look great. In real time, there are many more emotions going through your mind. How will you handle them? The answer, you don't know until you've experienced them. None of us do. I'm no different than you. I didn't know how I would feel until I took my first trade. I didn't know how I would feel till I took my first stop out. So how would you handle this little shakeout? You get into this buy setup, it triggers you in and then 
doesn't stop you, but almost stops you. And while it's happening, what are you thinking? Shoot. Bounces and red, 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 red. Oh my gosh. Did you get out too soon? Did you get nervous? Did you sell it? What'd you do? I don't know. Maybe you did nothing. Maybe you did the right thing. Maybe you did the wrong thing. I don't know. But you're not going to know either until you've actually done it. Okay. Same here. This is a nice, it's a nice pattern, right? Hindsight makes many trades look great. In real time, there are many more emotions are going through your head. How will you handle them? You don't know. This is a three bar play based off a really nice daily gap. It was over the 50 MA and when we took it, just over the 1267 area and it ripped. It was great. And for this is one of those trades I got a full target. But we all know I've sold I'd sold too soon before. If you get a stock that starts chopping around and chopping around and I start losing confidence in it, I start clipping shares on. For better or for worse. But the point is that I'm making is you won't know what you're gonna do until you've experienced that trade, that emotion, that time. And that is true for just about everything in life. And to reiterate it one more time, because I think it's such a good slide, is parabolics and climactics are unique and special trades. You can read the professional trading strategies manual, and you can look at the five or six criteria for this trade, and you can well understand them to a high level. But taking that plane out in a simulator is not the same thing as losing cabin pressure at 40,000 feet in real time. It's not the same thing. You may be prepared for it on paper, but until you do it in real life, you won't know, did you ring the bell? Meaning, did you answer the call properly? And then here's the beauty. If you did, wonderful. If you didn't, now we have a learning experience. What did we learn? And then from that learning experience, did we make the necessary corrections and adjustments? And every time, I mean, occasionally you'll do everything right and you'll still have a learning experience. But like, you know what? That's never happened before. All right, note to self, gotta be careful. I've seen that happen with news reports is a good example. People take a great trade, everything's right. And it's like, Jared, what happened? And I'm like, well, 1030 oil report. Oh, shoot, I forgot to check the news. Right? So they thought they did everything right. Check, 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 check. And it was just an oversight. Not a big deal, but meaning it was a mistake. All right. I learned from it. So as simple as some of it sounds, overcoming these things is very tough. I went through all of this stuff. There's still things I still deal with, right? So summary of pitfalls to avoid. I stayed in the simulator too long. The purpose of a simulator, and I didn't stay in super long. I think I stayed in about four months I, I traded real money for about a week or two. Jeff Yates got a hold of me. He's like, dude, you got to stop, right? And I did. But I spent too long there. Maybe a month or two too long. Not crazy too long. The purpose is learn your platform. Learn the bells and whistles, right? Learn how to place a trade. Learn how what each order means, your bracket orders, your charts, etc. okay? Learn market basics. Technicals or fundamentals. I prefer technicals. Some people trade on fundamentals. I'm not sure exactly how they do, but they, co they combine them. I prefer technicals. What else? Money, risk management, entry stop target. To succeed, you first have to last, right? It will take you a while to fine tune your strategy. So stay solvent while you're learning. And that's the next part. Learn a specific strategy with rules. Three bar play, buy setup, breakout. What is your approach? Okay. Choose a time frame for that approach. Two minute chart, a 15 minute daily, a weekly. So you need money management before you ever take a, a trade, period. You have to have that first. I am never going to lose more than $5 on a trade. Good. Well, what kind of trades am I going to take? Well, I might take breakouts. Okay. What time frame am I going to take the breakouts? Eh, I like the 15-minute chart. Okay, great. And then after that, how am I going to manage it? All or nothing, bar by bar, pivots, whatever. And then, then and only then, can you actually learn about you. Notice I put this after all those other things. Because you have to do these things first to learn more about you. You're going to go in with an opinion of yourself. And it's likely going to be a high opinion of yourself. And then you're going to take some trades and you're going to realize the, the vision of yourself is not the same as what happens when you're in a trade. Does that make sense? Like you're thinking there, you're like, okay, this is who I am. And that's likely who I'm going to be as a trader. So I know what my money management is. I know what my pattern is. I know what my time frame is. I know what my management is. Great. Going to go take a trade. Oh, shoot. Wow. I sold too soon. I didn't take my stop. I just learned a lot about myself that I didn't realize existed. That's the psychology. 
right? Having a consequence system, having an accountability part. You must experience losing to know how it feels. The same goes for winning, right? And this is where a simulator is useless. You have to feel it, man. You have to experience it. Create a trading plan. It's your roadmap. And then this one. Have some realistic expectations, for goodness sakes, right? Without them, you're going to fail. You will. If you don't realize that this business is almost definitely going to take you longer than you think, I don't care if you give it two years. It might take you three or four. If you don't have some flexibility in your approach to trading and your long-term goals and plans, you're probably not going to make it. I'm not saying that every single person should just keep trying to trade for five or 10 or 20 years if it's not working. Some people probably should give up. But I'm saying most people have failed before they started because they started with an unrealistic expectation and they're not willing to adjust it. And then they quit and then they talk smack about the business when in reality it was them who approached it incorrectly, right? I can't come out and tell you guys that I don't, you know, if I'm going to be a professional Formula One driver in a year. Well, that's ridiculous. I don't know anything about racing a Formula One car. So as I take my car to the track, doesn't mean I know what it's like to be a Formula One car driver. So what happens if after 11 months, I'm not where I want to be? Am I just going to quit? No, probably not. But many traders will. They'll go, well, I gave it a year. I should have done this damn thing in six months. So it's clearly not me. It's the business. Huh? It's not the business. There's tons and thousands of examples of people making money and being successful. So it's not the business. It's not the industry. No, it's you. It's always you. Everything's us in life. Even when it's not our fault, it's our fault because we chose that career. We chose that person to be with. We chose that person to lend money to. It's always our fault. So when people say I got screwed, most of the time they got screwed because they made a poor decision before they got screwed. I've done it many, many times. I've had people steal from me. Well, it was my poor decision to work with that person or hire that person or deal with that person, right? Still our fault. You have to take that responsibility. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a little bit about some of the pitfalls that I went through when I started trading, and I still deal with some of those things. The goal is not to be perfect, even though that's the goal. You'll never achieve perfection. We're humans. The goal is to learn from your experiences and be better. Okay, fail better, be better. What are you? What have you done today? What are you doing today to be better tomorrow? That is the key to success in life especially as it relates to trading, okay? Go out and get that education. Go out and find a trading partner, a trading buddy. Learn from them. Learn from their mistakes. Learn from their successes, okay? Then you go out and you're going to need market experience to be successful as well. Use good risk management. Use good money management, right? Make sure you have a trading plan. Understand the emotions that are going through you while you're in a trade. Maybe record the trades you're in, okay? So all of these things are very, 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 very important. Okay, but the ones I really want you to stick with are never be a victim. All right, this is your choice to be great or not be great. Always use good money management and be flexible with your expectations because they're likely not realistic when you start. We've all done that. My expectations were not realistic when I started. Okay, but you need to be able to adjust that once you realize okay, that was unrealistic. I need to make a more realistic expectation. All right, so I hope you learned a little bit about that. I hope it helps you be a better trader. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.